بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا أدخلوا في السلم كافة We are told to enter into deen, into Islam completely. Sometimes a person wonders why certain things, certain actions, certain amal at whatever time. Like for example, Zamzam has the power, Lima Shuribala. But the question is that for dua to be accepted, a person should not be consuming haram, wa mashrabu haram. He is eating, he is drinking, وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ His clothing is haram, فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابَ How can this person's dua be accepted? Imam Nawi explains, مِنْ أَيْنَ يُسْتَجَابُ لِمَنْ هَذِهِ سِفَتُهُ وَكَيْفَ يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ that whoever has this quality where they are consuming or they engage or they link to haram, then their dua will not be accepted. So although there is power in Zamzam, we need to be very particular. And the mudakara was made about eating halal wholesome food. We need to be very particular about the source of our food and more importantly the source of our income. We should make sure and try to be cautious that we don't contaminate even if a person has a drum of water but if one drop of urine falls in it contaminates it so we have to be very careful the best water on earth is the water of zamzam that it is a food from all the different types of food, savouries. It is a food on its own. And it is a shifa from sickness. So there is no water like it on earth. It is a dua of the Ibrahim والسلام, and his family and their sacrifices. And is amongst the greatest bounties through Jibreel alayhi salam. The heart of Nabi Ali Salatu Salam was washed in Zamzam. And it has the power for a person's dua to be accepted as well. And it is a source of nutrition, sustenance. When Abu Dhar radiallahu was by the Haram and he stayed there for 30 days. And uh, Nabi alayhi salam asked him, Mata kunta ha huna? How long are you here? And what have you been eating? So he said, I never ate anything except ma'u zamzam. I sufficed with zamzam. And I became fasamintu. I, I became actually overweight. I picked up weight. I gained weight. So Nabi alayhi salam then told him, Inha mubarakatun. This is a very blessed water. It is a food, a source of food, and it is a source of shifa from sicknesses as well. Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullah, you say about Zamzam that I have witnessed people who sufficed on Zamzam for many, many days, qariban min nisfi shahr, to such an extent that. A person could suffice, sustain, and survive for 15 or more days with only zamzam. And they would not need any other food or sustenance. And they would make tawaf like normal. And sometimes a person I would see baqiya alayhi arba'ina yawman. That for 40 days a person survived on Zamzam, making tawaf normally, fasting daily, and a routine never change. So Allah has kept barakah, and this barakah, the source, as explained previously, is from a special source from the Qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rewaite of Aisha radiallahu anha, 
He says, Nabi alayhi salam used to take zamzam in water bags. وَكَانَ يَسُبُّ عَلَى الْمَرْضَى Nabi alayhi salam should sprinkle this water and give them to drink. Those people that were ill, he used to give them zamzam water. The right of Abu Jamra, he said that I wasn't in the company of Ibn Abbas for some days. So when I met him, he said, Ma habasaka, what was the cause of your ab absence? So Qultu al Huma, I said that I had fever. So he said, In al Huma min fayhi jahannam. Thus, fever is from amongst the flames, the fire, the heat of jahannam. And Nabi alayhi salam has advised us to take through shifa of Tibe Nabawi. Fabriduha bima izamzam. So if you want to cool this fire, you want to extinguish this fire, then use zamzam. So it was the habit of mashaykh as well for shifa from illnesses and other sicknesses as well. Abdullah ibn Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the son of Imam Ahmad rahimahumullah, said about his father, وَرَأَيْتُهُ غَيْرَ مَرَّهُ يَشْرَبُ مِنْ مَاءِ زَمْزَمْ يَسْتَشْفِي بِهِ وَيَمْسَهُ بِهِ يَدَيْ وَوَجْهُ I seen my father on many occasions drinking Zamzam and wiping the Zamzam over his face for Shifa for cure. Muhammad ibn Jafar says, I heard Ibn Khuzayma once when he was asked, ilm? You've reached such a high caliber of knowledge. What was the cause? So he said, When I drank Zamzam, سَأَلْتُ اللَّهَ عِلْمًا نَافِعًا I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for beneficial knowledge. Ibn Ajah narrates about Imam Shafi Rabdlali. It was renowned that he drank Zamzam so he could become a master marksman. He was just to become a marksman. And when he should shoot his arrows, Nine out of ten, he would hit the target. Nine out of ten, he would hit the target. It is mentioned about Hakim Ahtlali. These are all great, great scholars that uh, he made dua to become a expert in tasnif, becoming an author and writing kitabs. So Ulama have mentioned فَصَارَ أَحْسَنَ أَهْلِ أَسْرِهِ تَسْنِيفًا He surpassed all the contemporaries and authors in his era with regards to being an author. Abu Zainuddin uh, al-Iraqi drank Zamzam and he made dua that he should surpass the ima of his era. And he said that he achieved that. He's also a great scholar. And then Ibn Hajar al-Askalani, who has written the Shara of Bukhari, a great scholar, Muhaddith, he himself says, Sharibtuhu marratan fasa'altu Allah. That when I drank Zamzam once, I made dua to Allah. And in that time, I was in the beginning studying the field of Hadith. Ayyarzuqani halata dhahabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate me to the stages of Imam Zahabi. So he said, I continued in the field of hadith and I reached the climax until I came to the level of Imam Zahabi. And after about approximately 20 years, I performed hajj. So, min nafsi. So I felt that I needed more Al-Mazid ala tilka al-hal. That uh, Al-Mazid ala tilka al-martaba. That that stage, that status, that Allah had grant me like Imam Zahabi, فَسَأَلْتُهُ رُتْبَةً أَعْلَى مِنْهَا 
I asked Allah now to elevate me higher than Imam. So I said I was hopeful and some other kitabs we find that he said that he should surpass and reach the level of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi. And the ulama say that we can safely say that he had reached and achieved that level of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi. So we have these opportunities, these barakat, the people of Islam and Iman are so fortunate. We should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has endowed us with these ni'am. If we just go back in history where Hajar radiallahu anha and Zamzam occurred, at that time there were two tribes in Mecca, Jurhum and Khuza'a. So she gave them permission to utilize the water, but she maintained the rights. She maintained the rights. So in certain situations in life, we need to be firm where it is needed. So the Jurhum tribe were driven out of Mecca and Khuza'a was remaining. And uh, over time, it was uh, covered up and uh, Zamzam was no longer visible. So Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam's grandfather Abdul Muttalib, he was given the opportunity where he was to provide water for the Haji, the pilgrims. So in his search for Zamzam, one night he seen a dream and telling him the spot where the Zamzam was. So as he came to that place and he started digging, then uh, he realized the extent of the work that was needed. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that time he had two sons, so he made dua to Allah to give him ten. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him his wish, then uh, he, intake, he took an oath that he will sacrifice one of his sons. So he got ten sons and the time came for him to sacrifice. So lots were to be drawn in the name of Abdullah, which was the father of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, came. So the chiefs, the Quraysh, tried to stop the sacrifice, but he made an intention. So he was convinced to go to a soothsayer sajjah, who would find a solution. So he advised him that blood money at those days for a single person was 10 camels. So Abdullah was to be put on one side, 10 camels on the other side, and they would draw lots. If the camels were chosen, then they would be slaughtered. If Abdullah was chosen, then 10 more camels would be added on. So he did that, and every time the name of Abdullah came, until a hundred camels. And then when he chose, then the camel, the camel's uh, lot fell in place. So from that day on, it was said that the, the, the blood money for one person was fixed on a hundred. Now the kitabs mentioned that for three consecutive nights, he's seen a vision of digging a well. During this vision, uh, no location was mentioned on the fourth night. However, Zamzam and the location was shown clearly to him. And, and the next morning he decided to go. The chiefs of Mecca ridiculed him of looking for water. Obviously it was close, close to the Kaaba. And uh, he did find the water. Now the people now started claiming that water as well. And then they needed to negotiate a middle ground for finding a solution. The other mentions also we on the first night he seen a dream, go dig up Thiba on the second night, um, Barra, and then Mahduna, and the fourth night he was given the name Zamzam. And he was told that Zamzam is that which will never expire, it will never end, it will never terminate, it is pure. And uh, you will find it at a specific location. 
And that's where he started digging. As he started digging, he found some swords, some treasures. And some mentioned it was dug by the Kaaba, or placed by the Kaaba. Some mentioned that um, uh, he took that, melted it, and, and built the door of the Kaaba. Allah knows best on the authenticity of these narrations. And uh, at the end afterwards, he was given the responsibility to give water to the Hajis and the Zamzam well stayed under his control until his death and then it was passed on to Abu Talib. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the time was right and it was needed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up Zamzam. There are contemporary also incidents where people utilize Zamzam for Shifa. There was a person from Yemen his sight became very weak and he had a very big, large Qur'an and uh, he could not read so he heard about Zamzam and then he started drinking a lot of Zamzam and he said a day came where from the small Mus'haf Qur'an he could read the Qur'an likewise there was a, another lady Yusriya Abdurrahman who was performing Hajj and she mentioned her story that she suffered from corneal ulcer in her left eye and that would cause migraine pain which never ever left it, it was perpetual day and night she took painkillers to reduce the pain but she was unsuccessful and uh, her vision was almost lost in the affected eye because there was a white film over it so she went to senior doctors and did tests and they confirmed that uh, eventually she would lose her sight and she would lose her vision. So she decided to put her tawakkul and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, she decided to go for Umrah where she would seek help directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When she came to Makkah Mukarramah she started making tawaf, doing amal Aswad, Zamzam, she started drinking Zamzam, put Zamzam over her eye and she was making a lot of dua and uh, after making dua and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after she finished her Umrah she noticed that her eye was a bit more lighter and uh, when she returned back to her home country they did tests again and they found that she was completely cured. Likewise, Dr. Farooq Antar says that he was diagnosed with stones, kidney stones as well, and uh, there was no solution besides surgery. So he delayed the surgery twice, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him to go for Umrah, and during the Umrah he drank some, some water, did the Amal, etc. And he made a lot of Dua. And as he left the Haram he felt a stabbing pain. He rushed to the bathroom and uh, the stone came out. So the stone passed out without any surgery. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept solutions in deen, in the amal of deen, we just need to have yaqeen in his amal and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to make effort, results are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should never lose hope, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. The amal for today is there was a person who used to give people loans and he stole his son, idha laqeeta mu'siran fatajawaz anhu. If you find somebody who's in need, in difficulty, they owe us money, don't force the issue, be more laxed in collection. Maybe Allah through our leniency will forgive us. So he said, it is stated in a hadith, Bukhari Muslim, Allah forgave him because of this act. And he's mentioned about another servant who has asked that what did you do in this world? He said, Ya Allah, when people were in difficulty, need to help them, when they were in debt, I was uh, relaxed and laxed. Allah said, you forgave, I should forgive you even more. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him on that amal. May Allah give us tufiq wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.